Hello my friends, welcome back to another video. So I'm going to show you a few pieces of available art. If you're not interested, you can just fast forward a couple of minutes to where the video starts. This is a piece I made using the new summer sequin set from Color Art. It's a primary element set. The colors are just magnificent and I have put a coat of KS resin over this. I'm going to put on another coat tonight so it'll be ready for purchase. Uh, KS resin, if you're interested, I do have a discount in the description below, but it just performs magic on your paintings. It just brightens those colors up so nicely and brings everything back to life. So this is an 11 by 14 oval. Up next, I have a beautiful painting. It's part of a series. I have not made painting three yet, but this is painting number one. It's a 10 by 20 Dutch pour on a gallery canvas. And it is just so beautiful. Interference, violet and blue, and a little bit of glitter just makes it an absolutely unique piece. Painting number two in the Sparkle series is a 15 by 30 gallery canvas, another Sparkle Dutch pour. I apologize for the view there. It was so bright out, I couldn't see where I was filming. But by the end of this little short clip here, you'll be able to see the entire painting. And then next up is a Dutch pour. This is not a sparkle piece, but it is gorgeous. It's very deceiving on camera. That orange area and the blue just shimmer like crazy. It's a 10 by 20 resin finish also. So again, if you are interested in any of these pieces, feel free to email me at artbytammy at yahoo.com. My friends welcome back to another video so today I'm gonna try something I've never tried before you know I kind of get bored sometimes with just doing the same old techniques over and over so what I try to do is combine techniques once in a while and see if they work or not I've never done this hopefully it'll work uh, so what I have are some pour scrape repeat tools that I, I that I got that I really want to try out. I just wanted to show a couple of cool ones that I ordered that I thought were really, really cool. So first of all, these here are called can, um, tile stands. So if you work on tiles, you could just plop your tile right on top of that. 
and you can stop wasting your cups if that's what you're using to plop your tiles up on. I thought that was a really cool invention. These are all those 3D printed tools. So there goes one. <laughs> uh, so that was one thing I got. Then I saw he also had canvas stands, so I wanted to give them a try. So here they are here. You just push your, your push pin through to hold it onto the canvas, and they stay. And then they have uh, six holes. I believe it's six. One, no, five, five holes. And so if you have a bigger canvas or whatever, you can adjust. If you need the, the push pin to go in the center, you could put it in there. Or you don't even have to use the push pins if you don't want to. You can just kind of just, you know, put them underneath the canvas, and they will work. And then the other thing that I got was the new Puffy 2000. Uh, it's got a slightly more wider range with the breath. So those are the two ends. Uh, if you've ever watched me before and seen me using this, you can blow in either end. So if you wanted a more narrow pathway, you would use the smaller end wider pathway use the bigger end i love 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 this for my dutch pours because there's always a little spot that i can't reach with the blow dryer and i hate bending down to blow because i always end up with paint all over my chest and my hair and places that there just shouldn't be paint okay so this thing i love and my other one is here somewhere but it's so gunked up with paint from me being sloppy that I'm glad to have a new one. So then he also has, you know, the, the pouring cups, uh, scrapers, you saw, uh, swipers. So for those that like to do the bloom swipe, you just put a little cell activator on there and just swipe right across and you'll get those beautiful cells. And then the last thing I want to show for this video is the little open cup. There's different sizes. I'm using the mini one today, and here's why. This is a 10 by 20 canvas. I am going to try to do an open cup across the canvas and then blow it out into a Dutch pour. So hopefully that works. I'm praying that it works. I should say I know it will work. It's whether or not I can get it to work. So... I have my colors here. I have them in my Loli Vefe bottles. I wanted to show you guys something. Now, these you buy at lolivefe.com. I have a discount in the description for you for anything from that site and the tools I just showed you from Pour Scrape Repeat. They sell bottle brushes. Get yourself a set. They're, they're not expensive at all, and they work really good to keep your bottles clean. So they have multiple different sizes of bottles also. Um, but today I'm using, I believe these might be the micro and the mini sizes. About two ounces of paint, four ounces. Th this holds about four ounces. And they have here, I will show you really quick, ones that hold seven and a half ounces. That's a seven and a half ouncer. They have one that holds 16 ounces. So all different sizes they have, okay? And these are really good to have for your sides when you wanna do your sides. Uh, also sell the containers that I like for my bloom paints. They stay nice and fresh in those containers in different sizes. And uh, they also have all your silicone molds that you like to use for resin that I'm going to be using, you know, hearts and trays and all different kinds of shapes. So be sure to check them out because I really, really like the company. Instead of paying, you know, 30 bucks for a Posca marker, not that they're 30, but you know, eight, get a couple of these for four bucks. They work great. So yeah, anyway, paints. I'm using our Blue Black Pebio's Iridescent Green Blue. Blue Black is by Atelier, sold by uh, Blick. These paints you can get all through my Blick link in the description. 
24 karat gold. You may not be able to get that one there, but excuse me. Okay, sorry about that. I was waiting for my daughter's eyeglasses to be in. So where was I? The paints, they are mixed with one tablespoon of paint, three tablespoons of Floetrol, and about a teaspoon of water per color. If you wanna make more, triple those amounts. I say about with the water because every different brand and color, it doesn't take the same amount of water, so you kinda of gotta adjust it. So starting today, and I am going to do a comparison chart very soon for you on this. But speaking of poor scrape repeat, Mark has on his website, on his YouTube channel in the description of the videos, he has a link to a free download. It is this chart here, okay? I'm not going to go over it today. I'm going to do a video on this, and I'm going to do all the different consistencies for each pour for you. But for today, I'm going to show you the Dutch pour. What it is, is you put, a, I'm going to put a blob of paint in this circle. I'm going to then tilt the paper and count to five. This column right here will tell us if my paint runs down to a seven, it will now tell you that if you download one of these forms, you put your spot of paint in there, tilt the paper, and if it runs down to the same spot as mine did, then you'll know you're at the correct consistency. I'm trying to explain this as simple as possible. So <clears throat> let's try this. So at home, you mix up your Dutch pour paint according to what I just told you. You then come and open a bottle I didn't take the cap out of it <laughs> oh only me only me only me okay here we go so you mix up your paints according to what I tell you to do you put a blob of it of it on one of these sheets okay pick up your sheet Let's count. One, two, three, four, five. So my paint ran between four and five. So we're going to say four and a half are my Dutch pour paints, okay? This is going to help you now because if you download one of these charts and you tilt that and your paint goes down to 10, you know it's too runny. If it only goes to one, you know it's too thick. So you want your Dutch pour paint between four and five. That's a perfect consistency. I love this chart. I am going to do one for every single technique that we have out there. So be on the lookout for that consistency video. I wrote that on there. So in case you want to take a screenshot, this is going to help a lot of people. This was a genius idea. I was trying to figure out a way to show you the different consistencies, but I didn't think about the timing. So Mark, my friend, good job. Mark Gilday from Pour, Scrape, Repeat. So I will link his video in the description that has this free downloadable chart. Go print one out so that when I do that video, you will have them, okay? So let's do our artwork. So again, this is a 10 by 20. I'm gonna just pour my paint, which is mixed the same way as the colors are. So it was one part paint, which was one cup of paint, to three cups of Floetrol, and about a third of a cup of water. And that was for Artist Loft Level 1 paint. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my little open cup right here. Well, well, we'll say right about here. Because whatever paint is right here, you're going to
blow out towards the end so you don't have to start right at the edge. And I'm going to need this cup full to have enough paint to get over that way, at least full. Maybe I might have to do another one on that end, but let's, let's start off and see what we get. So this is the blue-black I'm putting down first. Then some of the 24K. Don't want to put a lot of that because, you know, it tends to take over. The phthalo green, or turquoise, I should say. Not, I'm not using many colors. Okay, some blue-black. It'll be interesting to see how these colors blow out. I like, I like that blue-black. That is one of my favorite all-time colors. Some more gold. Some of that. Turquoise. And that. Okay. So I'm going to move my cup in a Dutch pour composition. Like when we pour our paints down, we kind of squiggle. So I'm going to and we're going to have to do another one because we only had the little tiny cup. Now these cups come in different sizes. As I said, this is a 10 by 20. I would have used the bigger one and filled it halfway. All right, but it's no biggie. We're going to come right here and do the same. Okay, same thing again. Just like that. Give it a quick torch and then we will blow it out. I let it sit for a minute just to see the cells that would develop and look at that. And of course this will pop up even more. Alrighty. Alrighty, so I turned the canvas around. I'm going to do a basic blowout from this end going up. So if you want to turn down your volume, I'm not going to mute this. We're going to do it on real time. I hold the blow dryer upside down. It makes the pedal and the paint just move much more nicely. Don't drag your blow dryer through it like I just did. All right, so that is gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. So deep and rich, beautiful, beautiful cells popping up. I cannot wait to show you this. First, I'm gonna get my puffing out and I'm gonna better define those edges. See, you don't have to worry when you have something like a puffy or an airbrush or a, a straw even, or even your mouth. You can just get the basic shape out like I do and then use your tools to better define it. So first I'm going to, 
I think switch this around because the most work I want to do is on this end and I don't want to stretch over the painting. I don't know about you, but I am really good at making things difficult for myself when there's always an easier way. So switch your canvas around if it helps. So I'm just lightly blowing, okay? This is a hose, don't forget. Just like with a straw, condensation will build up inside and your spit will drip if you're not careful with the saliva in your mouth. I know that usually you don't think about things like that, but my mouth is not a dry mouth. So I have to be careful when I'm blowing in to this that I'm not just like, full on blowing and letting spit go in there. I have to control my spit, believe it or not. So here we go. If you have a problem with blowing, you have a breathing problem or anything like that, I have an excellent airbrush in my Amazon shop. It's literally plug in and go really simple. I have no airbrush experience. And it works great. The thing I love about this hose is I could bend it like this, not have to turn my canvas and. See, just slightly. All right, just little tiny cleanups like that. So. I'm going to clean up my edges, you know, blow a little bit more here, and then I'll bring you in for the close-up because this is gorgeous. Alrighty, my friends, here we have it. I am in love with this. I'll turn the flash on in a minute. So if you enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing. I just hit 85,000. I'm so close ah, to 100,000. I'm excited. I'm going to have a big giveaway once I get there. There's that. Let me show you with some flash. So this piece and the ones you saw in the beginning are available. So if you're interested, just email me, artbytammy at yahoo.com. And look at that. We did an open cup Dutch pour. I'm going to do another one of these. I loved it. Kind of spices things up a little bit, you know. Challenges you a little bit. Because you have to think of how you're going to move that cup. You know, you have to think about how you're going to blow it out. So, give it a try. Let me know if you did. Comment below if you think it's a cool thing to do. And if you want to see more. And don't forget to mark your calendars for the great switcheroo on August 22nd, starting at 3 on Canela Sirocco Arts Channel, followed by myself, Dirty Artist, and Milky Way Art Designs. It's going to be a blast, and I'm very excited to get my piece done and show it to you all. So, my friends, that is it. Until the next one, I love you all, and happy pouring.